Hi, I'm Jen Leda. I'm the academic advisor for the Department of Health and Human Development and just wanted to share a little bit of information about the physical education and health P12 program for our students who are interested in um, potentially um, teaching grades preschool through 12 in content um, in physical education and health. So um, I would love to connect with you and talk a little bit more about detailed specifics about the program, but hope that this video is helpful in addressing a lot of frequently asked questions about the program and timelines for um, you know, applying and what you can expect during the program and all of that. So um, um, a little bit of an overview and kind of about our, our program. Um, kind of our departmental mission, the kinesiology and physical education program um, develops graduates who make informed decisions about human movement and performance that foster health and physically active lifestyles for themselves and others. To this end, faculty are dedicated to quality teaching, scholarship, and service. Um, some things about why you might be interested in joining the PE program and what that pr uh, program will do and how that will serve you in your career path going forward. Um, our program is a Bachelor of Arts um, degree. Students who complete our program are certified to teach in grades preschool through 12 in content related to physical education and health. So students complete the program with their Bachelor of Arts in Education. They are also receiving their initial teaching certificate and so are eligible to begin teaching in, um, in schools all across Washington state. What do students take as a part of our PEH program? Um, we're really an interdisciplinary program. Students are taking classes on um, principles and theories of education from our Woodring College of Education. It's a college housed within Western, which is our teaching college. All students who are earning their teaching credential through Western are a part of Woodring College of Education. And so part of that is taking classes that discuss philosophy, teaching practices, all of those kinds of things. Um, also, students are are working through curriculum designed to give them the skills and um, techniques they need to be able to teach in elementary, middle school, and high school settings. Here, our program is structured as we're a two-year cohort-based program, um, and students work as a group taking classes in sequence. In your first two quarters in the program is geared a lot towards um, elementary education and teaching practices. How do we design lesson plans and teach skills? Um, how do we adapt those for learners at all levels and aptitudes? How do we make adjustments for um, students who have different um, physical and mental needs and limitations? So elementary kind of um, practices and pedago teaching pedagogy are in the first couple of quarters in the program. Then we transition to more middle school focus and the last two quarters are focused on high school. Um, so it's getting, um, getting in instruction on how to design lesson plans, how to um, teach skills and how to create units um, kind of specifically in PE and health kinds of settings. Um, our program also features practicum where students are engaging in observation and um, lesson plan uh, teaching opportunities in K through 12 settings around Bellingham and Whatcom County. So throughout your program, you're gaining experience in classroom settings. So um, that is happening kind of throughout the duration of your, your program. Also, students engage in a 14-week student teaching internship. Once they've completed the entirety of their curriculum, the last step before becoming an educator and graduating from our program is being placed um, in a student teaching uh, internship position. Uh, students are welcome to engage in student teaching locally in Bellingham, Whatcom, or Skagit County, but students can also um, seek out opportunities to a variety of cities in, uh, in and around Washington State. Also classes, we, because we're an interdepartmental program and because we're wanting to equip and prepare our students with a good understanding of the human body, human movement, healthy living, and also how to teach uh, motor skills, students are taking classes not only from our PE pedagogy, um, not only from our Woodring practices and philosophies of education, but also classes from health education. So that's content like society and sex, society and drugs, nutrition, health promotion and disease prevention and consumer health. Students are also taking classes um, that include biology 348, which is human anatomy and physiology to give our students a good understanding of the human body. And then also classes from our kinesiology program, which is the study of human movement. So those classes include things like human growth and motor development. 
motor control and learning, strength and conditioning, program design, and psychology of sports. So just a sampling of what students can expect um, to get kind of a full understanding of wellness, movement, the body, and also how to teach skills um, to students in K through 12 settings. How long does our program take to complete? We are a two year cohort style program. Cohort means that students are working through the curriculum as a group, taking classes in sequence. It is such a special experience to be able to work through this curriculum surrounded by peers, other people who are wanting to go on and be educators in physical education. Our cohorts tend to be small, usually between about 15 to 20 students is kind of our goal. So it really allows an opportunity for you to develop good relationships with the people that you're moving through the program with in a time where Western really feels small and you have this supportive network of people who are excited about the same things that you are, and also this community to help and encourage and support one another as you move through the curriculum. Because it's a cohort-based curriculum, it means it's, that classes do need to be taken in the order in which they are scheduled. So kind of each quarter sort of builds on knowledge and skill sets learned in the previous quarter. So um, there's not really a way to move through the program at an accelerated rate. Um, differences where students maybe come in with certain maybe classes or requirements already satisfied can vary, you know, their credit and workload per quarter, but it always is going to take students at least two years to fully move through the entirety of their curriculum. Like I said, at the end of that two-year curriculum experience, you complete a student teaching internship. Generally for students, that's in fall. So first two years um, of time here at Western is working on GURs. Then the next two years is working through your major program. And then lastly, followed by your student teaching internship. Most students then graduate at the end of fall quarter uh, with their Bachelor of Arts in Ed and are ready to go out and pursue employment. What are you should you do before becoming a major? Well, here's kind of an overview of some things to be thinking about. We will keep you very busy during your time in the PEH program. So it becomes really, really important for students to work on prioritizing completion of their GURs in those first two years at Western. Or for students who are transferring into Western, if you've transferred in with your AA, that's a great space to be. During your time in the program, because we have so many classes that need to happen at particular times, it becomes really, really challenging to try to layer in any additional GURs. That becomes really the priority in those first two years of coursework. As such, there can be some supportive classes for you to take. Um, I definitely suggest taking Biology 101. This class is both a lab science GUR as well as a prerequisite for one of the required courses that you take. Everyone in the PEH program takes human anatomy and physiology, which is biology 348. So students are definitely encouraged to take biology 101, or if they're coming in from a transfer university, taking a transfer equivalent for that class. That way, um, students should take biology 348 in their first quarter in the program. And so that best sets you up for success to be able to jump into that class as planned. Also can be a really great idea to start thinking about gaining some experience in the school settings, whether that's volunteering in schools, your home community, whether that's or here in Bellingham or Whatcom County, whether that's working at kids camps over the summer, other ways that you can get an opportunity um, to gain experience working with kids. Um, definitely, in, if that can be in movement settings or if that can be in K through 12 settings, so much the better. Not only is that helpful as you're applying for admission to the major and showcasing your experience um, in background working with kids, but it's also a great way to affirm that this is a great path for you and develop that skill set. Um, sometime in your first two years at Western, it's a great idea for us to meet and just chat a little bit more about the program. Students can declare a pre-major in physical education and health or a PEH pre-major. As a pre-major, that does a couple of things. It doesn't obligate you to apply for the major. You don't have to. You can always change your mind. It's a really good starting spot, one, to get you connected so that I know that you're in our care and I can reach out to you with information that might be helpful for you, such as if class offerings are changing up or um, with reminders about application deadlines and timelines for admission so um, that you can know the information that is important for you is going to come your way. Also, it allows you some access to some of the classes in our curriculum ahead of time. There's a handful of classes that students can take before starting our program. So the first priority is working through GURs, but sometimes students are finding like, hey, I'm getting close to being done with my GURs or I have some additional space in my schedule this quarter. Are there any classes that I can be taking? 
The answer is yeah. Um, oftentimes students have access to some of the 100 and 300 level classes from health ed, things like society and sex, society and drugs, nutrition. So there's room in your schedule um, around your GURs to be able to start taking some of those classes. That can be a really great idea. It's a way to start getting um, exposure to some of that curriculum it can be helpful during your time in the program because sometimes it can allow you to have a slightly lighter credit load than some of the other students that are in the program at that time. So leaving a little bit more freedom in your schedule to be able to um, you know, get into classroom settings or engage in other activities as well. Other things to be thinking about, um, definitely again, prioritizing finishing those GURs. Um, another thing is to be thinking about um, getting prepared to apply for admission to the major. Um, one of those requirements are um, either having previously completed SAT or ACT. Um, for students that have done that, great. Um, if you've had your scores reported to Western, you're good to go and there's no need to do any other exams. Um, if you haven't taken the ACT or the SAT, then students are asked to take the West B exam. So doing that sometime in your sophomore year is a really good idea to support you in fulfilling um, application requirements and timelines. How do you become a PEH major? Um, well, we're a program that you have to apply for admission to. Um, because we're in interdisciplinary or interdepartmental type of program, students actually have to apply to two programs at once. So you, generally that's happening in the summer between your sophomore and junior years at Western. Students have to apply for both admission to our Woodrin College of Education here at Western, as well as apply for admission into the PEH program specifically. Um, the Woodring application timeline is um, the deadline for applying for admission to Woodring is um, September 1st. So that happens during, before the start of fall quarter, so during our summer vacation. I usually try to reach out to pre-majors with reminders and timelines for that um, throughout spring quarter, and I'm usually a couple of reminders over summer. The budgeting application um, can be a pretty extensive one, so I definitely encourage students to start chipping away at that early. It's not the kind of application that you want to sleep on until right before it's due. So it involves multiple essays that need to be written, as well as letters of recommendation. So generally, a great idea is to be starting to think about working on that a little bit throughout the summer months. So by the time that September 1 deadline hits, you are ready to go and have everything that you need. Students also have to be apply for admission to our PEH program specifically. The PEH program is much more straightforward, uh, or the PEH application is much more straightforward and streamlined. So definitely the Woodring one takes a bit more time and the PEH one goes a little bit quicker. That allows faculty a chance to get to know you. So share a little bit about your experience with sport, movement, activity, exercise, and your experience working with kids in those kinds of settings. Um, as part of that application process too, you'll also meet with our PEH faculty um, in an informal interview for them to get to know a little bit more about you and your journey and determining if um, you're a good fit as a PEH educator and if this program is a good fit for your needs too. Students, so this is happening um, while you're still technically a pre-major. So fall of a typical junior year is when you're applying for admission to Woodring, you're applying for admission to PEH, while you're also taking this first kind of foundational classes, which include PEH 340, which is some elementary um, PE pedagogy, Health Ed 151, uh, which is Society and Drugs, Biology 348, which is Human Anatomy and Physiology, and kinesiology 308, which is human growth and motor development. Um, so these kind of classes are taking in your first quarter while you're still a PEH pre-major. If you are a yes by both Woodring and you are a yes by the PEH program faculty, then you are officially convert to PEH major status and you are um, eligible to continue moving through our curriculum and completing the degree pathway. So what can you be expecting to take during your time in the program? This is an overview of our cohort curriculum. So the classes that you'll see highlighted in kind of the gray color are classes that students can take prior to declaring the major. So again, if you've got room in your schedule, GUR is already done, then you can start incorporating some of those classes. So there's the potential that those quarters could be a little bit lighter if you complete those courses ahead of time. No pressure though, you have plenty of time to get through all the courses that you need during your time in the program. So kind of our overview of our two years of curriculum, the classes that you'll be taking, and then lastly, that student teaching internship. Who are our PEH faculty? You'll be working with Dr. Nick Washburn and Dr. Hilary Roby. Generally, students are working with Dr. Roby in their first year. Um, her background is going to be more geared towards elementary and middle school PEH education, and Dr. Nick Washburn in year two in the program. Um, his background is going to be more in equipping you for middle school and high school teaching and placements. Other frequently asked questions that students have about the major. 
can I go through this at a faster pace and graduate earlier? What if um, every once in a while we'll have students who have maybe graduated with their degree in kinesiology and, it's, and we'll note, hey, I actually have already completed a lot of those courses. So given that I've already done some of those things like motor control and learning and anatomy and physiology, can I actually graduate early? Great question, but the answer is no. Unfortunately, because of the way our program is structured, certain classes are only offered once a year. And um, the, because the curriculum kind of builds on itself, there's not really a way for you to kind of condense that and take those in at, you know, in combined quarters. Um, so kind of long, you know, Long story short is definitely it's going to be two years. The difference where we'll see is for students who maybe have already satisfied some of those program requirements is that they'll have slightly lighter quarter credit, quarterly credit loads. But we know it's going to always take two years to get through the curriculum. If you've already, another question we hear a lot is if I've already earned my bachelor's degree, can I get my master's degree in teaching in PEH? Great question. And unfortunately, the answer is no. We don't have the capacity at our program. The only way that, that students can earn their teaching degree at Western is through the Bachelor of Arts in Education pathway. We don't have a master's in teaching pathway op, um, available for students to be able to complete that with their endorsement in PEH. So if the goal is to be teaching PEH, the pathway to do that is just through our Bachelor of Arts in Ed program. If you've already completed a bachelor's degree in something else, maybe that's you know, biology, um, then you would come back and you'd apply for admission to Western as a post-baccalaureate student to complete a second Bachelor of Arts in Education degree in physical education and health. Another question that happens is as you're looking through the curriculum, um, notice that sometimes there, there are quarters where you're taking quite a few different classes. Some of those are practicum where you're observing in classroom settings or acting in classroom settings around town. But there are definitely some quarters where that you'll start to feel pretty busy. Um, and sometimes we'll be working with students who have um, extracurricular responsibilities and obligations, such as varsity and clubs athletics or um, outside of school employment opportunities. And so for students who find that that quarterly credit load might be a little bit heavier than what they would like to do, there are sometimes options where we can um, keep some of the cohort curriculum intact, the classes that have to happen in certain sequences. Sometimes I work with students to help um, kind of lighten up their quarterly credit loads. And instead of taking two years through curriculum to take two years and a quarter or to do some coursework in summer to help lighten up that quarterly credit load so that students can be able to manage their time in an efficient way. Some classes have to stay where they are. Some classes um, in particular from things like kinesiology, sometimes we can move to summer or to the fall of the next year and delay student teaching. So for some um, students who find that going two years and one quarter through the curriculum allows them a little bit more flexibility and lighter credit loads so they can better focus on their work and then do student teaching in winter quarter once all of those things are done. Um, I would definitely love an opportunity to talk with you more about the PEH program, and you can definitely visit our website for some details about the program, what you can expect, application timelines, all of that good stuff. You can also schedule a time for us to chat. I do both uh, remote and in-person advising appointments for students who are interested in learning a little bit more about the program or declaring the PEH pre-major or talking about class planning to support you towards that. Um, please don't hesitate to contact me if I can be of assistance to you and look forward to answering any questions that you might have.